President Obama says both parties need to sacrifice uh, some sacred cows to reach a deal to raise the nation's debt limit and avoid a financial disaster only 10 days from now. But some members of his own party say he's willing to give way too much on entitlements, Social Security, Medicare. Lisa Sylvester is looking into this part of the story for us. For uh, this part of the story for us, uh, a lot of disappointment from the liberal side of the Democratic Party, at least as of now. Yeah, that's right, Wolf. You know, some progressives and liberals they are actually feeling a little betrayed. Uh, they didn't think that they would see the day when you have a Democratic president talking about significant cuts to entitlement programs, and some in the president's party are not too pleased. Neil Soroka planned on getting a graduate degree in journalism, but when Senator Obama decided to run for president, Soroka put his plans on hold and served as the campaign's media director in South Carolina and Ohio. But as big of an Obama fan as he is, he is prepared to not lift a finger to help the president get reelected if the White House backs cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, or Social Security. It's so personal for me because when we talk about cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits, I think of my 90-year-old grand grandmother in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. She lives on uh, Social Security, and any cut to that Social Security check or any rise in her Medicare premiums, that's a direct cut to her to what she needs to live on. You know, it's 101 degrees right now. That means that she's going to be she's going to be forced to pay more or pay more with less. And that's the last thing we need to be doing in economic times like these. Soroka now works for the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, a group that delivered to the Obama campaign office 200,000 pledges from former supporters saying, if you touch social programs, we're out. But entitlements are still on the table. Many liberals and Democrats feel President Obama is giving away their sacred cows while not insisting Republicans concede on tax increases. Unfortunately or fortunately, uh, you're going to need Democratic votes to pull, pull a deal together. And to leave us on the sideline, side I think, is fiscally not smart and politically not a very wise move. A new CNN ORC poll shows 54% of people disapprove of the way Obama is handling his job as president. 13% of those believe the president is not liberal enough. The president says he's still pushing for tax increases as part of the shared sacrifice and the best deal may be a deal that leaves no one satisfied. So is the White House worried about alienating its base? Well, we asked the White House that question, and they said, quote, that, that there are tough choices on both sides that have to be made and that everyone will have to compromise. Yeah, a lot of White House officials and Obama supporters think that in the end, once there's a Republican candidate, the liberal base will have no place else to go. They'll be okay, but that's a risk uh, in terms of enthusiasm and all of that. Right, because they're saying we just won't, we'll sit at home, we're not going to go out, we're not going to be knocking on doors, and that's a big thing for your base. It certainly is. Lisa, mm -hmm. thanks very much. And joining us now from Capitol Hill, the independent senator from Vermont, Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator, thanks very much for coming in. Good to be with you. Why did you vote today against this uh, cut, cap, and balance uh, legislation that passed overwhelmingly in the House of Representatives? Because it's a proposal that would make drastic cuts in Medicare, Medicaid, education, Social Security, and every program that is of relevance to ordinary Americans. Look. The deficit is a serious problem, but you don't balance it on the backs of the weak and the vulnerable. You don't balance it on the backs of children by throwing them off health insurance or substantially cutting back on Social Security benefits. The way you do deficit reduction, and what the American people have said in every single poll, is you ask the wealthiest people in this country to start paying their fair share of taxes. You do away with loopholes that corporations are enjoying so that while they make billions in profits, they're not paying a nickel in taxes. You take a hard look at military spending. You don't do what right-wing Republicans want, and that is to savage programs that in the middle of recession people desperately need. Well, the, the House Speaker John Boehner this morning said you could have made changes. He says, in effect, you're abdicating the, the Senate Democrats and you, your, your legislative responsibility. I want, to, I want to play for you a little bit of what the Speaker said. And if they don't like our version of cut, cap, and balance, guess what? That's what the legislative process is for. They can amend it. They can change it. Uh, they can send it back over to the House. Uh, and frankly, uh, they ought to take action uh, on that bill. All right, what do you say to the Speaker? Well, we did take action on the bill. I took action on it. I voted. I'm not, I voted against it. It is a disaster. Again, when the richest people in this country are getting richer, what Mr. Boehner is saying, sorry, no, we're not going to ask them to pay a nickel more in taxes. 
when large corporations make billions of dollars in profits and pay nothing in taxes, Mr. Boehner is saying, oh no, I don't want them to pay any more in taxes. But when it comes to destroying Social Security and asking an 85-year-old to pay $1,000 a year, lose $1,000 in Social Security benefits in 20 years, Mr. Boehner thinks that's a good idea. Throwing people off of Medicaid when we already have 50 million people without any insurance, Mr. Boehner thinks that's a good idea. Well, we have some differences of opinion. Every poll that I have seen well, says that the American people want shared sacrifice. They do not want to balance the budget on the backs of the elderly, the sick, the children, or the middle class. Would you be open to some sort of deal that the president might work out with, this, with the House Speaker uh, in order to avoid this August 2nd default deadline, a deal whereby there would be significant spending cuts right now, but any tax increases would be punted, would be kicked way down, way down the road in order to get it passed. Are you open to that? No, uh, that would be a disaster. And again, a proposal like that is defying what the American people have said over and over again. Only a small minority of people, apparently right here in Washington, D.C., think that it makes sense to attack Social Security when Social Security hasn't contributed one nickel to our deficit to cut back on Medicare, to cut back on Medicaid, to cut back on education. I do not support that proposal. And the idea that pushing down the road at some point in the indefinite future maybe will raise some revenue, I think that is absurd and way out of line with what the American people want to see happen. You know, the president has said publicly he's open to making some uh, reductions, some significant changes in Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid for that matter, means testing. He's, he's raised that possibility, changing the cost of living index. Uh, are you with the president on that? No, absolutely not. And I think, you know, we're getting a whole lot of calls in Vermont, and, and, and I suspect members of Congress and the Senate are getting the same calls. You know what, Wolf? Go back to the records. Find out what Barack Obama said when he was running for president. And what he said when he was running for president is, John McCain, John McCain wants to cut your Social Security. Not me. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stand with the middle class of this country. The president should go back and read the speeches he gave when he was running for president. There is a mass of, massive amount of disappointment. Let me get back to Social Security. Social Security today has not contributed a nickel to the deficit because it's funded by the payroll tax. Has a $2.6 trillion surplus, can pay out every benefit owed for, to every eligible American for the next 25 years. Why in God's name, in the middle of a recession, would you cut back on Social Security? This is what the right-wing Republicans have wanted for decades, and it saddens me very much that the President is going back on his promise to the American people and is apparently acceding to the Republicans' request. Is it too much to suggest that, if it is, you let me know, that you almost feel betrayed by this President? Well, it's not just me. When somebody runs for office and says, I am not going to cut Social Security, and then two and a half later, two and a half years later says, oh, I am going to cut Social Security. It's not just me. I think there are millions of people who think the president said one thing and did another thing. Massive disappointment in this country. So what are you going to do about it? Uh, right now there's a crisis potentially. There could be a default. Uh, interest rates would go up. Unemployment would go up. The value of the dollar would go down. That would be a, an across-the-board burden on everybody in America. That's right. No question about it. And it's incomprehensible to me that the Republicans today are holding our entire economy hostage on this debt ceiling issue when during the Bush years, you will recall, when we increased the national debt by five trillion dollars, they had no problem about raising the debt ceiling seven different times. Seven times five trillion dollars increase. But right now, the world's coming to an end. They can't do it. I think the good news is that our good friends on Wall Street who helped cause this recession and the big money interest, they know that they're going to lose a whole lot of money also if we default. They are beginning to put pressure on the Republican leadership, and I think they are, they are powerful enough uh, to make the Republicans understand that default is not a good idea. Senator Sanders, thanks very much for coming in.